Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Great to see everybody again. And uh, my partner John and I are with uh, uh, Stephen Campbell, the brain whisperer. How, how is your brain today, Stephen? It's good. It's active. I look outside. It is gorgeous outside. And uh, it's just a beautiful day. So <laughs> it's, it's exciting. Well, every, right. every day is a good day when you really control your mind and your, That's right. That's uh, right. where and you're what, going with life. And what's so exciting is that it can be done. You know, it it's, can, kind of, yes. it's kind of yeah. interesting. Uh, um, I saw a TV program about um, a week ago, and they were talking about everything that was going on every day. And they referred to every day as Blur's Day. Uh, <laughs> because... Uh, 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 I know the topic yes. we're going to speak to about today is the pandemic and, and maybe crazy. Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, the uh, world is yeah. crazy right now. And, yeah. and a yeah. lot of people are going nuts with it and it, it affects them. So are there uh, uh, ways that uh, maybe uh, with the techniques that, that you've uncovered in your yeah. practice and your teachings for us to deal with Blur's Day uh, to make each day actually more meaningful or to make the days more meaningful? Well, today we're going to be talking about something that we have not talked about at all. Hmm. And that is our feelings. Hmm. Because when I talk about dealing with the pandemic, I'm really narrowing down on your feelings, which have been nuts. Anxiety, depression, suicide rate for kids have gone up hmm. our feelings yeah. are not so we want to talk about where those feelings have come from and i have some wonderful news so you ready yeah this okay. is from the work of dr albert ellis back in 1960 he came out with a book called the guide to rational living which turned psychology on his ear what he proposed which has now been uh, validated by decades of research all around the world is that our feelings and I'll get this specific or specific now our feelings are not coming from the pandemic they're not coming from being isolated to know where they're coming from they're coming from our beliefs about the pandemic and our beliefs about being isolated so let me illustrate to you in a very, very short story. Let's, let's say, Art, that I show up at your front door with a shovel. And we've been friends for years. I say, hi, Art. Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm digging a hole in your backyard. And without your permission, I go to his backyard and start digging a hole. And he watches me dig the hole, and he begins developing some beliefs. We've been friends for years. Our kids have played together. He knows it's my birthday today. He knows I love rose bushes. <gasps> That's what he's doing. He's digging a hole to plant a rose bush in my backyard. Oh, Steve, you're the neatest guy. I love you so much. That's scenario number one. Scenario number two is that we absolutely hate each other. And I show up at his front yard with a shovel. And I say, hi, Steve. Hi, Art. I'm digging a hole in your backyard. Without asking you the permission, I go to his backyard and start digging the hole. This time his beliefs are completely different. This time his beliefs are that I'm digging the hole to bury him in it. Now watch this. Same art, same Steve, same shovel, same Saturday morning, same backyard, same hole, completely different beliefs, completely different feelings. Our feelings are primarily not coming from the pandemic. They're coming from what we're saying to ourselves about the pandemic. That's why you've met people who are just doing great. You met other people who are going steer crazy. A lot of that is because of what they are saying to themselves. People say, you know what, Steve, I'm not really sure what I believe. There's a wonderful handle. And the handle is your self-talk. If you want to know what you're believing, pay attention to what you're saying. Now, let's apply this. People say, I feel stranded in this pandemic. Or I feel useless because I'm out of work. We think that being uh, in the pandemic or being out of work explains how we feel. Rather, it's our belief about being in the pandemic. It's our belief about being out of work that explains how we feel. And, ready? Here we go. 
we can replace those beliefs. One of my heroes is Dr. Viktor Frankl. Dr. Viktor Frankl wrote Man's Search for Meaning. He was an inmate at Auschwitz for three years. He lost his sister. He lost his mother. He lost his wife. After he came out, he, had, he was given 79 honorary degrees. He was a psychologist. And what he said was amazing. He said, everything can be taken from a human but one thing, which is the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. What he showed that even in the midst of the horrors of Auschwitz, there are ways to get through that in a healthy way. In other words, his message was we can choose our own way. We can also choose to believe certain things and our feelings, ready? Don't miss this. Our feelings follow. People say that's really hard to understand. When 9-11 happened, it didn't matter what I was believing. As the towers were falling, they had these very, very strong feelings. Absolutely. Of course you did. We all did. The world did. But over time, a week, a month, our feelings began to change in me and our feelings began to change in you because of our beliefs. So let me give you another example. 2018 was an amazing year for me. In the beginning of the year, I discovered I had cancer, cataracts, diabetes. And then at the end of the year, I discovered I had advanced, serious heart disease. Well, for the cancer, they took out a place off of my scalp and my cancer free. For the diabetes, I've completely changed my diet and I've lost another 20 pounds. For the cataracts, they replaced the lenses in my eyes and no longer I no, no longer need glasses. And for the heart disease, I had open heart surgery last year and my heart is healthier than ever. But the point I want to make is this. My feelings did not come from the cancer or the cataracts. They came from what I was saying about the cancer and the cataracts. Did you see that? Our feelings are coming from what we're saying. Here's another story. I was working one day at the college where I was teaching. Mary called me, which she never called me. Actually, I was walking out and the receptionist said, your wife's on the phone, your wife's on the phone. I picked up the phone. You get Mary near a phone and she talks. This time it was completely silent. Have you ever picked the phone? You know something's wrong. I knew something was wrong. So finally I had to say, hi, are you all right? No. I just walked out of the doctor's office. I have cancer. I need everybody home. So all our daughters came home. Their husbands came home. We spent the day together. And that night we talked. And we said to ourselves, okay, here's the cancer with everything that goes with it. Mastectomy, corrective surgery, chemo, losing your hair, being out of work for five years, all of this stuff, here it is. But, 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 it's not the only thing in our life. We're going to isolate this. And this is per the work of Dr. E.P. Seligman out of the University of Pennsylvania who wrote Learned Optimism. We isolated the cancer and we said, yes, this is true, but it's not the only thing in our life. There are other things that we love, like we live in Sonoma County, like we've been married for 40 years. We have daughters who are married to men who love them even more than we do, which we never thought was possible. We are not going to let this cancer be an umbrella over the rest of our lives. And what did our brain say? Okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. We locked on to that and they become more and more real in our lives. So the next year, Mary was cancer free and the next year and the next year. And then she called me in the same way, but this time it was different. This time she called and she talked and she said, hi, hi, what's going on? Well, I just walked out of the doctor's office and they found something. <gasps> How are you doing? 
She said, you know what, Steve, I'm doing all right. I made it through last time. I can make it through this time. What changed? Not the cancer. It's what Mary said about the cancer. It's not the pandemic that's driving you crazy. It's what you are saying to yourself about the pandemic. And you can replace what you are saying. How? Talk to somebody. Do something special. Learn how to play a new instrument. Spend time with your children. Do things differently. What an opportunity. We no longer have to commute. We're getting discounts. Nations are helping each other. And the wonderful thing about all of this is that when you decide I am replacing my beliefs about the pandemic with new beliefs, your brain just says what? Oh, okay. Is it true? You know what? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. Wow. So that's very powerful stuff. It just, uh, it was riveting. Thank you. So, so the message, uh, uh, as we get to this point, uh, of, of this conversation is that you can wire your brain to be as positive as you want it to be. You even decide. It, you, we decide as opposed to having everybody else decide for us that no, you're going to get... Or the tested. pandemic decides. Right. Yeah. When, and yeah. And Steve, I, I take a different message. It's not different, but a, another message. And that is that we're in control of our feelings if we want to be. We're not necessarily... Okay, let me, let me be a little careful with that. You can't say to your feelings, I will feel this way, I, I won't feel that way. Feelings don't work that way. They're not like our thoughts. Feelings are, they're, they're, they're too affected by everything else, how, how much sleep we got, what we ate, etc. But we can affect our feelings by looking at where they're coming from. So let me give an example. So Mary and I were in bed one day, and she was playing solitaire, and I was laying there. And I was beginning to get really, 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 really irritated with her. And I just learned this stuff. And rather than getting on her case, I began saying to myself, where are those feelings coming from? Why am I feeling this way about Mary? And so I reviewed the day and I remembered that something happened in the morning that I thought it happened. So I mentioned to her and she said, oh, what I meant it was da, 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 da. And I said, oh, okay, great. Okay. In other words, our feelings are affected by what we're saying. We can't say, I will feel this way and not feel that way. That's unrealistic. Our feelings don't work that way. But what we can say is, where are those feelings coming from? Maybe I can replace those beliefs with something new or something different or something whatever, and the feelings will follow. Yes, I'm in control. Wow. Let me give you another illustration. When our daughter was born, she wasn't breathing. They rushed her to Children's Hospital. My, my sister Sally met me, and she said, I want to tell you something, Steve. You cannot give up on this child. And I said, what do you mean, Sue, Sally? And she said, you have to stand by next to the isolate and talk to her the whole time and make sure that she knows you're there. And I said, Sally, she's three hours old. And she said, no, she's not. She's a lot older than that. So for the next seven days, I stood next to the isolate and I talked to Sarah and I played songs with her. And I let her know that she was here. I told her about her sister, about her dog, about the park. I talked about everything. And the doctor came into her in the seventh day, and he said, you know what? She's been breathing 100% oxygen. If she does recover, she's going to be very damaged. So we got to cut the oxygen down tomorrow morning. And I don't know what's going to happen, but we've got to. So I brought in my guitar that night, and I spent the entire night playing the guitar. The next morning, they did the blood gas. It had gone down by 60%. The doctor said to me, I think she wants to come home. 
and three days later she did. That happened to a little three-day-old girl. That can happen to us. That's exciting. We're in control because we can control what we're saying to ourselves about ourselves, and our feelings follow. That was revolutionary. All the psychologists said, no, 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 no. Your feelings are first. And then they began looking at the studies and they realized, you know what? You're right. Our feelings are coming from our beliefs, which means we are in control. We can't say, I will feel that way and not feel that way. Our feelings don't work that way, but they're coming from what we're saying. So we can change that part and the feelings gradually change. <gasps> exciting, exciting yes. stuff. Yeah, good clarification. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And with that, I yeah. see Art's eyebrows go up. He's saying to himself, this has been wonderful, but it's time to go. <laughs> I, I am saying that. I'm also saying that it actually uh, uh, makes, uh, it's like a reaffirmation uh, of uh, the way we can look at things yeah. and determine how we see them. And yeah. that then that becomes how they are to us as opposed so. to... Uh, the outside world controlling how we feel. That's right. That's right. And that's what's so wonderful about this is that you, you met people who were raised in situations that were horrendous. And yet the things that they have done with their lives are absolutely amazing. You've also met people who have been raised in situations that were so wonderful. I mean, you die for. Some of them wish they could. Why? Not the situations. It's what they said about the situation. Right. So you've given us a lot to think about. And uh, for those of uh, us who uh, need a reaffirmation that we can uh, take a positive attitude into the pandemic as we get through it, uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. And we look forward to the next time that uh, you uh, do your brain whispering. It's like cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exciting stuff. And it's all in my book. So. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.